Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got two sneak previews for you of some very interesting knives that have shown up on my doorstep lately. Um, the first, actually, um, as many of you may know, I have a service that I call a stealth review, where an, an interested maker will send me a piece of gear, usually it's a prototype or something like that, something that hasn't been released to the public yet, and I carry the, the, the piece, and then I give them my full good, great, the bad, and the ugly, but I only give it to them. And that way they can take my feedback and, well, do what they wish with it. In some cases, yeah, this makes sense. We're going to make a change before it goes to production. In some other cases, now this guy's freaking nuts. Just ignore that part. Look, that that's great. Um, but it, it is a wonderful process for me because I learned something talking to the makers in this process, and it's a wonderful process, I'm told at least, for makers because they can see things from a different set of eyes. I'm a guy who regularly gripes about knives, and so seeing my opinions may be of some help to him. Hey, maybe not. Who knows? But anyways, I've done this before on a number of occasions. Two of the ones I can be public about are uh, these little guys right here. This this is the Booze Blade Smoke and the Booze Blades Arrow. Both of these are made by the same folks. Well, Booze Blades. Um, and uh, William Booze, that is. And I did a stealth review for him of the smoke uh, before it came out. And then he sent me, oh, I don't even remember how long ago, maybe six months ago, this little guy, which is a pre-production prototype of his next knife, the Mini Arrow. And uh, just like with the smoke, which eventually turned into a full production version, which I have right below it here with a couple of little tweaks, um, I, I recommended a couple of tweaks to him, and he made some tweaks on his own uh, that I think make the knife a lot better. And uh, so I've had this little prototype around there, but the problem is, as a gear reviewer, prototypes are very dangerous because, well... It's not the real deal. It's not the thing that you all are getting. And so a billion people have asked me, Nick, what do you think of the Booze Smoke? What do you, or I'm sorry, what do you think of the Booze Mini Arrow? What do you think? You got a prototype, what do you think? And it's like, well, it's, it's very good, but it's going to change. Who, who the heck knows? Um, and so finally, today, after the USPS decided it needed to spend a little sojourn over there in Oxford, Michigan, which is nowhere freaking near me, um, they, uh, they finally had it to deliver my production Booze Blades uh, Mini Arrow here, the guy I picked out, and I bought the I bought the silver just because a little bit different. I got a lot of blue knives, but anyways, the uh, Mini Arrow here, full production version, I can very safely say now is a really, really freaking good knife. And the reason I can say that is because all of the issues that I had with the the, the original have actually been addressed and have been fixed, and a couple of the little concerns are now gone. And so what they've done, what they, what Booze has done, is taken a knife that was already pretty damn good and just honed it and made it better. Well, not honed it as in sharpening the blade, that's a different affair. But they, they just made it better, and so this is a really, really freaking good knife. Unfortunately, it is not a really, really freaking available knife at the moment. Booze Blades has developed somewhat of a reputation, and these small drops tend to sell out pretty quickly. I'm hoping very much that he drops another set of them, but um, I will be doing a full review of this guy. Given that they're not available, I'm probably not going to be rushing that one to, to, to press, so to speak, but I do want to let people know that uh, my initial reluctance was not because this was a bad knife. In fact, no, this was a very good knife as a prototype, but what, seeing the changes, seeing the little differences in production, this one right here is absolutely great, and uh, unless it kills me overnight, the night as I sleep, it's probably going to be a gem. Let's just be real here, because it was a great knife, and I think with carrying it, I will just like it even, even more than I liked it carrying the original prototype version. So anyways, this is a very neat little knife. The Mini Arrow, like I said, they're not available at the moment, but hopefully more will come available down the road, and, uh, you know, that, that, that'd be great, but if you see one, for instance, on a forum or something, absolutely don't hesitate to pick it up. It's a beautiful little knife option here, and it is indeed little. Show size comparison, of course, Spydeco Delica. So, uh, anyways, that's one item. The other thing, a lot of people have said to me things like, well, Nick, you know, you're not really tactical. You don't look at the, the survival aspects of things. In fact, when I'm discussing knives, I never ever talk about self-defense. I never talk about survival. How good a knife would be in a military situation, in a, you know, the, the civilization is broken down. And, and so I have this, uh, I, I want to let you guys know, I hear you. I know that this is a weakness of the channel. And, uh, and so with that said, I want to show you the, 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 the you know, even this little guy, this is a very little tiny blade that's, you know, great for an office drone, but not so great for survival. So with all that said, I want to show you the other knife that I've picked up for the channel, and that is this little guy right here. The Wee Knives Escaton.
Yeah, I know. This has this is absolutely brutal for survival. Um, as in, it wouldn't help you. But you know, I I couldn't resist the intro there. No, sorry, I'm probably not going to start doing fixed blades and Emersons and crazy, you know, he ah sorts of things. It's not my shtick. This kind of thing, however, is kind of my shtick. This is an absolutely nuts knife. This is designed by Elijah Isham, and uh, he is uh, a very very interesting designer. He's done a couple of other things I've talked about on the channel before. Uh, I think I've talked about a couple of these things. At the very least, he did the Kaiser Megatherium, which I know I did a review of and very much liked. Um, this is a, a knife that he has done with Wee Knives. That's right, Wee Knives of Starscrew fame, although he has requested Torque Screws, and they, they, they helped him out here. But this is a very, very weird piece, and talking to Elijah, apparently this was not a piece he ever intended necessarily to have made. He, he'd said something along the lines of, you know, I, I didn't think they were actually going to build it. I just showed it off, and they, they wanted to give it a shot, and indeed, Wee has given it a shot. And they have made something very, very, very strange here. Because this is a knife that is weird just in, in, in 50 different ways. To start with, the back end of it is an integral. You can see here that the entire back end is formed out of one chunk of metal here that's hollowed out. The carbon fiber, which constitutes uh, the rest of it, is actually just kind of bolted on there. The liner uh, for the liner lock is, again, bolted uh, straight into the titanium. I'm using this little guy here. But the rest, of, so it's like a half-integral knife, which is in and of itself weird. Then it's got all kinds of other weirdness to it. Um, This blade is unusual. Let's put it this way. The, the stock thickness in, oh, and of course, size comparison, Spydeco Delicate, it's also freaking huge. Just, uh, well, 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 we're throwing things in there. But the stock thickness on this blade is pretty substantial. Pull it up next to your Spydeco PM2 here. You can see we are about PM2 stock thickness. Uh, and so that that's impressive. It's got all of these various little cutouts here. Um, and this is, by the way, a whole big chunk of M390 steel. So uh, it's not a trivial chunk <laughs> here of metal. But anyways, it's got all these cutouts. It's got all these 50,000 little fullers in here. It's, you can see here it's got this weird compound grind thing going on with three different surfaces at three different angles to cut with. Um, it is just so freaking weird. This is a crazy knife at a very real level, and then uh, when you close it, you can see parts of the blade through the... It looks, you know, like this looks like an extra from a Transformers movie, but not the good ones, the ones with Michael Bay instead. Um, but nonetheless, this is a really weird knife. It's a very interesting one. A lot of people have asked me, well, Nick, is it practical for everyday carry? No. Of course it's freaking not. Look, I mean, you take one look at this knife, and it is a, a four-inch freaking beast of a, a half-carbon fiber, half-titanium integral bearing knife with M390 and a blade that's this thick that balloons out the full thickness this quickly. No, this is not the knife that you're going to be carrying and cutting up apples with in the lunchroom. By all means, do, but uh, yeah, it's a different thing. I look at this as being very much an interesting sculpture, and I've been thinking very hard about how I'm going to review this. Um, and and I, I think I've got some good ideas for it. But anyways, it is, however, very, very cool. The action on it is absolutely great. This little hidden flipper tab in the back here works shockingly well. I didn't think that was going to go so hot, I'm going to be honest with you there, but it, it absolutely does, uh, which, which is neat. It works nicely. The action on it is, frankly, scary. Um, this is a fall shutty knife, and I haven't even started to service it yet. Sorry about the heat, guys. It's really freaking cold in here, so you'll hear that going. But anyways, this is a very, very interesting knife. It's a very, very weird knife, and it's something that is pretty much unlike any other pocket knife, certainly any production level pocket knife, because this is a full production base. You can see here they made 700 of them, and this is actually 007. Hey, there you go. And I'm wearing a Bond watch. Ah, okay, anyways. Uh, so uh, this is just completely and totally bizarre. Probably not your best choice for your tactical survival, self-defense batoning, although let's be honest, if you pull this out during a mugging, People are just going to get scared enough that you're some kind of a cyborg creature and run away. That's not a, that, 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 I'm not advocating that. Please don't sue me. But nonetheless, it's a weird piece. It's an interesting piece, and it's a piece I'm really looking forward to taking a look at and uh, doing a full review of whatever form that it, full review ends up taking. So anyways, um, there you go. Those are, uh, these are the, uh, the, the two knives that I wanted to sneak preview for you here. The Elijah Isham, actually two knives, both made by Wii, both silver and carbon fiber. Except this one actually is 
a little bit more practical for everyday Gary, but the Ishem Eschaton and the uh, Ishem, that is, Eschaton and the, uh, the, the the Booze Blades Mini Arrow. Very, very interesting piece. And of course, I've got my other usual milieu of interesting knives to throw on the table, um, ranging from, you know, high-end pieces like this to uh, this little guy right here, which is a box cutter by Sheffield, uh, which is a company that well, they do some interesting stuff, that's for damn sure. Uh, I've got a little A2 uh, number on the table coming up here soon. I got all kinds of joy coming up for you all. So anyways, um, thank you very much for your ongoing support. Uh, thank you to my lovely viewer whose name I'm forgetting who arranged to have this sent to me first. Um, and thanks to, uh, well, actually, I don't got to thank him. I bought the damn thing. But thanks to Booze for making a nice knife here. And uh, <laughs> regardless, thank you, everybody, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.